Today we're going to have a chat about Riv Nuts and Plus Nuts and why Plus Nuts are probably the better option for 95% of your work. And we're also going to look at installation tools for these things. That's a very cheap Riv Nut tool. That's a much cheaper DIY version. Which is better? Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Daryl, welcome to the channel. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna have a chat about uh, Riv Nuts, Plus Nuts, and we're also going to look at a DIY tool that I've found on the net that I think is pretty awesome. But first, let's go into Riv Nuts. Now, these things have been around forever. I've first came in touch with them when I was doing some motorsport, uh, racing a Lotus 7 replica, and these things were into the tub, the uh, aluminium cladding, to hold the back carbon fibre guards on. Worked a treat, and um, they were really good until they'd lose a little bit of their, their compression and just spin. Um, and once they do that, they're a bit of a pain to get out. You can get them out, but they're a bit of a pain. Um, and, you know, for their intended use, where you can't get a nut behind the back of whatever you're trying to affix to, they're a really good thing. But it wasn't until I started to get involved with some camper design and construction that I came across something that I think is much better 95% of the time, and that's Plus Nuts. Now, a Plus Nut is very similar to a Riv Nut, except it's got some cuts lengthwise along the body. And where those cuts are, the shaft of the, the plus nut is pushed out slightly. And the reason they do that is that when you compress this the same as you would a riv nut, you get these wings that come out. And I've installed a riv nut and a plus nut into this piece of aluminium sheet. And you can see the riv nut here, it's compressed exactly as a rivet would, but the plus nut, the wings have come out and they give you a much larger holding area. What you'd like to think that that does also is that if it does lose a little bit of its tension, you could either insert the tool and tension it up a little bit further, or if it spins, it will catch on something and not spin anymore. Um, I think they're a really good idea and I think for 95% of the use, a plus nut is a much better option than a riv nut. I came across the plus nuts, a lot of people um, making camper vans out of delivery vehicles and they were finding that plus nuts don't rattle loose where a riv nut possibly would. But where would you use a riv nut where you wouldn't use a plus nut? For me, it's probably if you could see the edges of these when they're folded up. Um, so if you're close to an edge, you wouldn't use it. You also wouldn't use it if you didn't have the length to get the uh, original plus nut in. As you can see, it's a much more compact piece, the riv nut. And you also wouldn't use the plus nut if you didn't have room for these wings to bend over. But I think for 95% of your use, a plus nut will give far better holding um, and a far longer term solution than a riv nut will. And of course, like the riv nuts, the plus nuts come in all different shapes and sizes. I found them a little bit harder to get than riv nuts because you can pick up riv nuts anywhere now, um, but I just picked them up on eBay. And although they probably were a little bit more expensive than riv nuts. When you're installing these things, you need a riv nut tool or plus nut tool, they're much the same. Uh, I just use a riv nut tool on Uva. However, you do need to drill a pilot hole for these to first uh, drop into before you compress them with whatever you're using. I find a screw and bolt gauge invaluable for that if you don't have a pair of vernier calipers. Just get your riv nut or your plus nut, drop it into the a, a hole. It's got to be relatively firm, so with the riv nut, an M12 for that M8 is a little bit loose. For the plus nut, it seems pretty good. And you want to be able to just tap it home. Um, so you don't want it just to flop around in there. T to get a really nice fit, uh, the, l the last little bit, you just want to tap home. So I found 
On these I installed the roof nut needed an 11.5 millimetre hole and the plus nut needed a 12 for an M8. So you just can't think oh I know that I use uh, 12 mils for the plus nuts and drill that for the roof nut because it will be a little bit loose. Probably doesn't matter that much but um, if we're being pedantic about it we may as well do the right thing. Now, when you're installing these things, you need some method to compress the rivet nut or your plus nut. And most people will just buy a rivet nut tool. This is a hand version. You can get, you know, all different types of ones. This is probably about the cheapest you'll buy. This was part of a kit um, and it came with a whole heap of different size rivet nuts and a whole different size fittings with bolts on them. Um, but you basically screw your rivet nut on insert that into its, its hole that you want it to fix to and push in the arms. Um, it can get a bit difficult if you, the arms are too far out, you can hardly squeeze them in. Um, and if you're doing a lot of them, it can take a lot of time. But this thing's seen better days and I thought, I need to get a better tool for this because I was gonna install some plus nuts when I do the fit out for the camper, the fridge box on the camper. And they can get really expensive. Now, whilst I was looking around for my options, I found a DIY version on the net, and this thing is pure brilliance, and it's cost me five or six dollars. It is a bolt. The bolt is the same diameter as your rivet nut or plus nut, so you can thread it on here, the same as you would thread it onto the um, the shaft on your manual version. Now, starting from the head of the bolt you've got a washer. That washer, in my mind, needs to be the same size or bigger than the coupling in the middle. The coupling in the middle is a very long nut, basically. It's, this is called a galvanised coupler. It was in the, the nut and bolt section where all the, the galvanised nuts and bolts were for um, pergolas and things like that in my local hardware shop. It was like three dollars. That is an M12 version. Um, basically, you just need to be able to hold that while the bolt spins around. So moving down from that, you've got another washer that's the same size as the one up near the head of the bolt. You then thread your riv nut or plus nut in this instance, the same way as you would do with the manual one. Then you get a socket to drive the bolt. I've got this socket on a half inch fitting that will just pop in and out of my Milwaukee driver. I find the driver uh, gave you more control and it was more talky than using a drill, but you could use a drill. Um, and then you get a spanner that will go around the coupler in the middle and hold it. How it works is you drill your hole the same as you would in your substrate you're attaching your uh, rivet nut or plus nut to. Insert the rivet nut or plus nut in situ. Get a spanner, put the spanner around the coupling in the middle and that's sort of like an arm and holds it nice and straight. You then get your driver put it over the head of the bolt and then just drive it home. Um, you need to be a bit careful, especially with rib nuts that you don't overdrive them um, so that they start spinning. So get to, I'd do some samples, get to know it, but it works absolutely superbly. And you'll be installing these things in 20 or 30 seconds each. It, it is so quick. But once you get the hang of it, it works like a five or six hundred dollar uh, rib nut tool. So, that's it for today. Um, I hope that helps because I found the um, plus nuts really helped me um, when I was designing things and attaching stuff to it. And this tool, this tool is absolutely awesome. It is a game changer for five or six bucks. And yes, you will need different bolt diameters, but how much is a cheapo bolt from the hardware shop? So, I hope you enjoyed that guys. That's it for today and we'll see you next time. Bye now.